All right. Now I'd like to call to order the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for Pottstown Borough Council of November 6, 2019. Uh, would you kindly rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge to the Flag. Before I move to number four, uh, there, there are two things I, I'd like to interject. One, uh, some of us had had the privilege of hearing the summary report from the, the ULI, and part of that on economic development was covered in our, our local newspaper. Uh, there's another part that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, in the beginning, Mr. Higby, uh, started talking about challenges we have and the like. And this is one of the slides he put up for those of us in attendance. And that is, it is clear that Pottstown is not shrinking from the difficult hand it has been dealt. And at that point he was talking about uh, conditions beyond our control. All the heavy industry that moved out of the borough, other small businesses that closed down. Uh, he, he mentioned the recession of 2008 but we still move on yes. number two said Pottstown has the leadership to make great things happen and I know he was referring to not only the council up here but the staff that works in this building and those people who are out on the streets every day working for our residents benefits um, I'm glad he recognizes that we have great leadership and uh, we have all pledged to move forward to do the best we can. Three, he says we have limited local resources given the job at hand. And I think they learned through interviewing all the people for that week that Pottstown has been hit hard uh, as far as cash flow because of all the changes in assessments, all those reductions. Uh, certain large institutions that are not paying taxes right now. We're dealing with less and less income each year, and yet this staff puts together a program and executes it. Uh, it it's phenomenal. Uh, each year we're doing more and more with less and less. And last, he says, we must be efficient and focused in order to address key priorities and make measurable progress. Uh, what he was not privy to was some of the changes that have been made right here in council. Um, I've had the opportunity this year to create and appoint an efficient methods committee. And under the, the chairman Lebedinsky, uh, we started by taking a hard look at the L&I department, both internally and externally. Uh, inside, they made some great progress in reducing the number of forms that any developer would have to fill out in order to start bringing their business here into town. Externally, uh, everyone is meeting with anyone outside who's willing to talk and tell us how it could be done better. And if we can take that idea and apply it here, we're certainly going to do that. Uh, second, uh, we changed the name of a zoning ordinance or zoning committee to an ordinance review committee. And by doing so, uh, under the chairman of uh, Ryan Proskell, we're looking at not just zoning issues, but all the issues in the book, and there are quite a few of them. Uh, if we find any that are no longer applicable, we're going to ask council to remove them. Others, if we find are awkward or cumbersome, we're going to do the best to streamline it. So yes, uh, we've been dealt some bad cards in this hand, and also yes, uh, I work with a great team of people that are doing everything they can to make life here in Pottstown better than ever before. And, and I thank you for hearing that. Uh, the second addition that's not on your um, agenda for the evening is our, our mayor, 
uh, has the privilege of swearing in a new officer. Mayor Henrik? You're not? I think she may have done that. You, did you? You, you did that. Oh. Okay. Ahead of time? Can you rewind the tape and show everybody? Uh, okay. She's efficient. She's ahead of us. So number four is a presentation, a, a life-saving award for Pottstown police officer Gregory E. Fritz. You, you didn't do that yet, did you? No, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. present this life-saving award to Officer Gregory Fritz. On September 8, 2019, Officer Fritz responded to 435 Manitani Street for a report of an ambulance responding to that location for a woman who was eight months pregnant and having contractions. Upon his arrival ahead of the ambulance, Officer Fritz encountered the woman in active labor and the head of the child she was about to deliver was already out. He observed the child was blue and in distress. While continuing to console the mother, he was able to determine the umbilical cord was the source of distress and that contractions were compounding the problem by cutting off the baby's air supply as they occurred. Officer Fritz freed the wrapped cord from around the baby's neck and a moment later, the baby was delivered. Officer Fritz then provided rescue breathing via the pediatric bag valve mask until paramedics were able to cut the umbilical cord and take the baby to the ambulance. Mother and baby boy were both taken to Pottstown Hospital. On September 13th, the baby was released from the hospital. Thanks to the efforts of Officer Fritz, both baby and mother survived a very memorable start to this, his life and a fitting close to Officer Fritz's career of service to the Pottstown community. The actions of Officer Fritz bring honor to himself, the Pottstown Police Department, and the community in which he serves. Okay, number five is a presentation of employee service awards. Uh, it seems to me that once people start working here for the borough, they tend to make a home out of it and stay. So, Justin? also a very uh, exciting part of my job as well and one that I, I, I like to do very much so um, you know as I said our employees are some of the greatest assets we have in the borough and this evening I'm honored to present our third annual years of service awards we initiated this uh, recognition program in 2016 to show appreciation for our full-time civilian employees our service milestones begin with five years of service through to retirement and without further ado, on behalf of Borough Council and myself, I wish to extend congratulations to all on reaching this important service milestone with the Borough of Pottstown. Your loyalty and commitment to the success of this organization has been noticed. Again, thank you for your hard work and much dedication. 
When I call your name, please come forward to receive your certificate. Um, once we take the photo, I would ask that you please line across up along the front for a group photo. And I just want to say for everyone that we're going to recognize tonight, this represents 210 years of service to the Bernard. So, under the five year service award, we have Keith Place. Come on, Keith. Congratulations. Uh, Stephanie Drobbins. Stephanie Andy Graham. Monica Miami Diaz, James Mao. Okay, under our 10 years of service, we have Janice Lee. Next is 15 years of service. We have Terry Jones, wow. Kathleen Hafer, mm -hmm. and Charles Hallman. Next, we have our 20 year service award winners. And that goes to Christina Pennypacker. And at 25 years of service, we have Kim Bainbridge. Next, for 30 years of service, we have Sandy Sheppo. Last but not least, you can guess. <laughs> 45 years of service <laughs> goes to Doug Yerger. Woo -hoo! Karen Lewandowski, come forward. Thank you. Uh, recognizing Karen C. Lewandowski for 20 years of dedicated service to the borough of Pottstown. Whereas Karen C. Lewandowski has served the borough of Pottstown as a dedicated employee since 1999, and whereas during her career with the borough, she served in a number of different capacities, including Finance Department Accounts Clerk 2, Accounts Clerk 1 slash Cashier's Office, Licensing and Inspections Department Administrative Assistant 2, and whereas for the past two years, Karen has worked in the position of Public Works Administrative Assistant 2, and during that time, she served our residents regarding street conditions, trash recycling removal, and water distribution concerns in order that residents could receive the best level of customer service possible. And whereas Karen's presence at Borough Hall will be truly missed by the people that have worked with her. Now, therefore, be it and it is hereby resolved by the mayor and town council 
that Karen C. Lewandowski is officially recognized for the outstanding service she has provided the borough of Pottstown through 20 years of employment, and further, that she has extended best wishes for a happy and well-deserved retirement. Adopted at Pottstown Borough Hall, 100 East High Street, this 6th day of November, 2019. Signed by Dan Wien, Council President, and Justin Keller, Borough Manager. Congratulations. <laughs> And now, uh, we'll have a presentation about Edgewood Cemetery by Andrew Minostra. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, I am here once again for the seven million times to talk about Edgewood Cemetery. Um, last April 2018, we had the opportunity, and like Sue and I, to uh, make a difference in hot stamp. Those opportunities are rare. We were presented with a challenge, and the challenge was Edgewood Cemetery. And at the time we took that challenge, we, uh, we inherited a cemetery that is owned by no one that was completely overgrown and in a state of disgrace. We had no money. What we have were our good books, I guess. Yes. And we formed a committee, and with people like Kathy Skitko of the Hill Skill School, Ben Penrod, familiar face everywhere, and um, people like Hobart's Runner, institutions like Hobart's Runs, the Hill School, and the community in general came together to help us make it look like what it looks like today. Which will not be confused with Arlington National Cemetery, but it is respectful. Okay? It is respectful once again. And how we did that is we did that through cajoling, thanking, constant begging. Please give us money. Please give us money. Please help us. Please respect our ancestors. And the community came together. It's great. Awesome. <coughs> we had a successful community cleanups. The last one, October 5th. Another 100 people came out from all over the community. Cleaned up. We've had people come to us. My friend here, Dr. Mankiewicz, if anybody has noticed recently this week, the jungle of <coughs> Kime Street has been tamed. Thank you, Dr. Rankins. He hired, at his own expense, people to come and cut down the brush there. So it looks respectful, once again. But begging, I can't all, we can't always count upon begging because Eventually, people get tired of it because the same people get asked to contribute constantly. So there has to be a sustainable model to ensure that we're not dealing with this problem five years from now, ten years from now, next week. So, a little while ago, some business people in the community. Yes, Dr. Mankiewicz <laughs> and John Jones came to me and asked about a proposal that, he, that they thought would create sustainability for the cemetery. Oh, there's the cemetery. Okay. Um, and what they approached me with the concept that would create sustainability for the cemetery for quite some time. As I've explained in my past begging sessions in front of you, 
that the cemetery needs about $25,000 a year to maintain this area. When I mean maintain it, I mean cut the grass. Okay? And that doesn't include you know, making the trees look good. That doesn't include that. This is just bare minimum maintenance. So every year, our committee has to go out and raise $25,000 okay, amongst the community. And we have been successful for two years. It's great. Awesome. It's tiring as well. So what happened was the concept is, is that land, as you can see, has a lot of graves in it. But there is area that has no graves. It is a field. So here is a concept that Dr. Mankiewicz and Mr. Jones came up with, which is as follows. This will make sure that the grass is cut, the trees are taken care of, leaves are cleaned up, oh, and at an assessed value of $724,000 for that land, which is currently generates zero tax revenue for the borough, it will create, at the, at the current millage, it will create an annual payment of $18,646 in taxes to the borough and to the school, $61,736 on an annual basis. We assume that that goes up with taxes as well, but that's where we're at right now. And how did that happen? Well, the cemetery becomes a cemetery again. Cemetery becomes a cemetery. And the cemeteries are different now. Because the concept of cemeteries is a bad model. Because there's a perpetual care fund that people pay into, and eventually, eventually, that perpetual care will run out. Okay? Cemeteries get filled. So where's where's the money going to come from? The current model for cemeteries is that about 60% of people get cremated, okay? There's not much of the burying as much. It's more cremation. So let's go to the next one. So, as you may know, the burial markers, which were the burial markers, they were done many, some of them many, many years ago, and they are falling down, and they are not on the ground. The amount of money that it would take to correct that disgrace, we don't have. We never have. So what we need to do is we need to repair these burial markers. We need to install the fencing. It's pretty look nice. Re-establish the brick building. There's a brick building for maintenance. And then either utilize an existing nonprofit or create a nonprofit for a perpetual care fund that will allow for the maintenance of the grounds to have yearly fundraisers from and so on. <laughs> Additionally, unfortunately, due to some of the great work of many of the people on this council, the bike trail passes right by the cemetery. The cemetery could become a trail stop where people come and learn about those people who came before us. They could learn about the headmasters of the Hill School. They could learn about uh, and with Meyer. They could learn about General Harris and you could learn about all the cool people who came before us and became and helped make Potsdam what Potsdam was. Or did. So, here's the thing. Or here's the concept that we would like your help with. What we would like, what they would like to do is they would like to create a for-profit entity. And that would create a columbarium, and the first saw that I thought that was a new element on the periodic table, but it's not. Okay, and mausoleum, establish a <laughs> cemetery, scattered gardens, because people need to come and throw their, throw the, their deceased ashes. And uh, so we're going to create a non-profit, or a, a for-profit. And once we create a for-profit, the ability for the cemetery to 
perpetuate itself, grows. But that's not enough. That's simply not enough. Okay, so what the concept was is that since the cemetery is owned by no one, what happened is that we would need to borrow to get involved. What do we need to borrow to do? Well, we need to borrow to take the cemetery over for like a second. For like a literally a hot second. Okay? <coughs> take it over for the condemnation process and take it over. And then at the same time, once they take it over, transfer the property to the for profit entity. And the for profit entity, what will happen at that particular time is that the immediate transfer tax benefit of about $15,000, or $30,000, because it will be fully transfer taxable, um, will immediately be generated. And they will take this over the cemetery. Concept being is that they will subdivide or separate the non-grave part from the cemetery. So that cemetery now will have two distinct parcels. Oh, look at that. Okay. What we have here is a concept of what they can do. What they can do is they can put a mixed-use building that can serve the community out there that I don't know if there's much out there in the, in the, in the, in the way of retail in that area off of Beach and Pine and Edgewood. What they would do is they would create businesses there, okay? There could be residential space up there, okay? And what that will do is that will create income for them. Well, how does that create income for Edgewood Cemetery or for the, for, the, for the maintenance? Well, we would request an endowment to set up. An ironclad rock solid endowment that is used clearly only for the cemetery, only for cutting grass. It's not used for paying anybody's salaries. It's not used for anything other than cutting the grass, okay? What do we need? We need about $500,000 for that. If we put that in the down fund, it generates $5,000 worth of 5% uh, interest. That's $25,000. So as long as that endowment exists, it will generate enough income to keep the cemetery at least in the condition that it's in now. Now, as this thing becomes more of an ongoing venture, then other things can happen, like improvement of the roads in there, right? installation of lights, so that trail goers who we want to come in and we would like them to come in, visit, learn a little bit about the history of Pottstown, and then go to this lovely place, whatever it is, Cunningham, kind of kind of but we're going to go someplace, and they're going to come to the town, stop, perhaps refresh themselves, okay, with something healthy, and then continue <coughs> on their way through Pottstown. I see it. It's very possible. Another version of it. Oh. Additionally, the for profit entity will make an additional $5,000 annual donation to the borough for the first one, two, three, two, three, two, and three. And then, next one. Oh, four and five. There's a $10,000 to the annual donation to the borough. In addition to the normal tax revenue that we will get. So, what does this do? What does this do? Well, it takes a piece of land that produces nothing for the borough except the ability for me to spread oxygen here and talk to you about it on a semi-frequent basis, and it presents, becomes a taxable entity. It creates property taxes, school taxes, and it, it ensures for our lifetimes, our lifetimes, we're not going to be talking about this cemetery as a disgrace. We're not going to be talking about how badly our, 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 how it looks on us. We're not. Okay? And that's what 
I can support. I can support something that sits there and says, here's a solution to a problem. This is a problem. What? So, many have ragtagged this. But you know, one day we'll get tired. So I, we got to come up with a solution. We got to be creative. And what I've noticed about this town so far, it can be a lot of creative people. And this is a creative solution to this issue. I am sure that there are people out there that will be surprised at this particular plan. And I welcome their input because I've always said I don't learn anything from people who agree with me. I only learn from people who differ. You know, because I have to consider some people's concerns. So this is a possible solution. I can support that. But I'm asking all of you is to consider it. Okay? Is to ask Mr. Barner okay, <laughs> to look into the issues that we would face to see if we can come up with a more permanent solution to the to the challenge of the cemetery. Because it's a challenge, it's not a problem. It's not a problem to make sure that people are respected. It's not a problem, but it is a challenge because we have to raise money, and that's so we got. Look at this: the benefits of the borough policy, relief from any liability, beautification, perpetual care, ongoing maintenance and improvements to one of the oldest cemeteries within the borough, and we got tax income. Seems like there's some benefits there. Seems like there's some stuff that we can all agree is pretty good. I'm sure there's stuff that we're not thinking about. But these are very, very, very good concepts, good thoughts. Oh, questions. A big question mark. Okay. Um, all I'm asking is that you consider that to think how we can possibly solve this challenge of Edgewood Cemetery so that you don't count on small ragtag uh, groups of people to go out and knock on people's doors. This could be a solution. And we bring it to you because you know that you guys will look at creative concepts. And I don't think there's much more creative stuff than this. What do you think of that? Pretty creative. Uh, I have to the other, obviously, since we thought of it, it's obviously pretty creative. But, you know, I've been here in town longer than I ever thought I would be. And, you know, when you come down a high street, coming from the hospital, you know, that is one of the things you see before you get to the downtown. And if it's a ragtag thing, your impression of the town starts right there. There's two things that have always upset me. That and the 400 block of High Street. Um, you know, the downtown is getting a rebirth. It's unbelievable. How, in what short of time, all the things that have happened are happening. But everybody speaks of the rebirth of Pottstown, and it truly is happening. So this is just another thing to create a rebirth. <clears throat> oh, one thing I did forget. Um, what I forgot was this Saturday, um, the Travis Manion yes. Foundation, okay, which ha is going to be having a event at the cemetery, starting at nine o'clock. And what nine the nine thirty? Nine thirty. Nine o'clock. I'm working that day. I don't know. I'll be there. Right. So, and what they're going to do with the um, by one of our other community members, not a board member, just a community member, Bronwyn DeMazo, who is the sister 
uh, Joe Price, a uh, Navy SEAL who was killed. Uh, and what they're going to do is they're going to put markers and flags in all the veterans' graves. And that's what's going to happen. And I think that's really cool. Not only because it's really a great idea and a respectful thing to honor our veterans, but it's really cool that somebody from the communities just came in and said, man, I want to do something. And that's what we need. Okay? And, and so the concept is, in a nutshell, take it over, give it, right? Subdivide it, they subdivide it, they start off with the cemetery, establish a fund, you know, what, what it can be used for, what it can't be used for, creates a minimum standard of care and presentation or presence, and hopefully it, it grows from a cemetery, which was a spirit place for dead people, to a it's an integral part of the community. Integral part of the community where people can learn about those that went before us. And that's it. Anybody have any questions? Well, I guess you know, I discussed it with our borough manager briefly before, and it's uh, we, there's a, also a risk that uh, if we don't think of something to do with it, it's uh, um, we might have to take it if we like it or not being the borough, because uh, if it falls in disrepair, I guess there's a chance that the county might make us do it. And then we, then we, the taxpayers on the, on the hook for maintenance. So this would be a very good alternative to that, obviously. Yes, there is provision in the fiduciary code that allows uh, <coughs> the cemetery to be, mm -hmm. and forces the borough mm -hmm. to take it. But the, the concept is so, the, the, um, it's a very, very old statute, right, Mr. Burner? You are correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's extremely old. I think the, the minimum contribution that they're required to make is like, you know, three hundred dollars, okay? Because that, apparently that was like a King's Ransom in eighteen oh two or whatever it was established. So but that's what we want to do. Thoughts? Do you have Any a this, do you have a sustainability plan for the businesses mm -hmm. that you wish to put in? Uh, wouldn't I would hate to see you undertake this and then you have a business that comes in for a year or two and then shuts down. Do you have a contingency plan for those kind of businesses? Or another thing is that the placement of the building that you want to put is off of High Street. While well, he said coming in the high, come in the coming in the Pottstown that High Street's you know the banner. How are we going to funnel or advertise that there's buildings back here that's going to bring in either residential or business uh, opportunities? Okay, I think that's a heck of a good question. Because okay. I like to say to people, I'll just cut the grass. Okay. I'll just cut the grass. Okay. That's his problem. Okay. That's his You know, one of the thoughts is, you know, this is juxtaposed to the Hill School. The Hill School has essentially turned her entrance off of High Street onto Beach Street. Okay. All the things that come in, you know, the people come from out of town, that's how they're directed. And Face it, the Hill School has a lot of people in there. Honestly, the uh, headmaster will not let the kids walk down High Street because of the 400 block. So they're not permitted to come into downtown. So the stores that would go up on that end would be servicing that population and anybody else who wants to utilize them. Okay. So you have a ready market right there from the Hill School. And that area along B Street, as you point out, is certainly underutilized for that community to the people who live around here to have stores, walkable stores. We like the walkable, we like the bike trails, we like the bike stuff. We do it. Bike stuff's cool, it's easy. So there's a there's they have no competition. So it's gonna be their job to figure out businesses that are going to complement uh -huh. the needs of that area. But that's everybody's job. That's every, every business owner's job. They're thinking about what is needed there because they want to succeed. You know, we did a survey of the faculty and the students, what they'd like to see in the building juxtaposed. And, you know, we got a fairly good idea, you know, a barber shop, a cleaner, you know. They came up with rational things that they just don't have. 
at their disposal. But it's not, I don't want to make it seem like this is an annex for the Hill School. It's for everybody in that area. I, I'm just worried about getting the name out, the word out that it's not going to be on High Street, it's going to be on Beach. You know, it's, it's only one block off, but... Yeah. As I said, now that the Hill is making the entrance on Beach Street, just the traffic that goes into the Hill School will help make it visible. The other thing, I don't want to minimize what you see on High Street because it's going to be visible that something has happened to something that's pretty unsightly right now. I couldn't believe how much better when I had them take the jungle down, as you described it today. So I had the jungle taken down yesterday, and it really was remarkable how much better it looked. Because I've been driving up and down, I live on Con Street, so I've been driving up and down there, and I thought, wow, it actually, I think, added a foot to the roadway when they cleaned it up, and, and because it was all covered with, and then, of course, after we do this all yesterday, they came and took a telephone call. I guess they're changing some of the telephone poles. There must be one right there. A telephone pole on the ground was placed, so I guess they're waiting to take down the other telephone pole. But it's remarkable how much better it looks now. Don, your, your, your point is, is well taken. Thank you. It's, it's well taken. And um, this is not the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. No. This is a little bit of a risky project from our standpoint. Well, there's no other there's no other commercial around that. It's mostly residential and uh, right. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a commercial. There's a water repair across the street. And then Edwood uh, School's right there too. Isn't it? Well, well it's not Edwood. That's what I'm saying. So there's, yeah, there's no school. expansion yeah. beyond yeah. that. So. It was going to be the meadows. The Tom Hilton one put in there. Some meadows in there. Um, the Hill School would, you know, would like to get that, but you know, there's, there's angst against the Hill School because everything they take goes off the rolls. And but one of the things that John and I would like to do is buy some of the property from the Hill School and lease it back to them and put it back on the rolls. We looked at doing that at the old Harps Garage right the, on High Street. The problem is there's some environmental issues there, so we didn't want to tackle that. Thank you. Don, just to follow up on what you had said, I mean, this is all a concept, so yeah, no, nobody's really gotten into the weeds just yet, right. other than cutting the grass. But <laughs> with, with all that being said, there are zoning issues. Yeah. The council would have to look at uh, the, the zoning district and what uses might be permitted, how you would do a mixed use or uh, some type of overlay or permit certain non-residential uses by uh, you know, conditional use, all those things would be up for grabs. So I don't know that anybody's necessarily married to a use or a plan at this point. It's a great no, idea. It's just no, going to no, see no. it to see. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah Mr. Garner, I, I could concur. All I'm here asking, <coughs> asking this body is to allow us to explore mm -hmm. the concept. Explore it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And come back to you again. Mm -hmm. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Okay, hear your concerns, hear your concerns, <coughs> hear the concerns, and see if we can come up with something that can address a challenge that we face. And that's all I'm asking. That's the only thing that, that we're asking for is to begin the process, to begin the process of what to address this challenge. And who or who we should work with to put this forward? What is the next step? Why don't you guys say this is an idea? Or it hasn't happened. What's the next step? And then we go to the next step. And then we go to the next step. And then we go to the next step. Then we go to the next step. Okay? But if we don't take the first step, we stay standing. That's all we're asking. <laughs> Andrew, can I ask you a question? Um, in this research that you're doing for for this, do you talk, are you going to talk to the neighbors, like the people in the area? Oh my gosh, they're the most important people. The neighbors are the most important people because they have the most at stake. Okay. Okay. You can't. I have found in my 
35 years on this earth, that um, <laughs> I found that you can't cram something down somebody's throat. You have to bring them in. You have to make them part of this. You can't just sit there and say, you will. Okay? You can. Okay? You gotta say, what's your concerns? What are you worried about? What are you worried about? And Those then we sit there and talk there is what you want. I mean, let me, you know, if this is, as he said, this is not a field of dreams. Build it and they will come. If we don't build the right thing, they won't come. As you pointed out, you know, it's all, you have to supply the whole neighborhood with something they want to come to. And something that beautifies their neighborhood, makes it better, so all their property values go up. When the Beach Street laws were presented many years ago, yeah. okay, I was involved in that with our fusion. And we basically had community meetings to listen to people yell at us. It's okay. It's okay for you to yell at us. It's fine. Tell us what your concerns are, and we will try to address them. Now, if your concerns are ridiculous, okay, like, I can't do them, okay, I can't go here, okay, uh, I, I can't help you. But if you have issues that need to be addressed, parking, safety, lighting, okay, all those types of things, we got to consider it. Because what will happen if we don't consider it is that is that the people that we need to approve this won't approve it because we didn't respect their voters. So that that okay. You know the other basic principle that I work, a good deal is a good deal for everybody. If it's not a good deal for everybody, it's a bad deal. Very good. Thank you. Oh, now it's my turn. Oh. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry, I was long-winded. All right. right. Yes, I uh, know. So, do my... My fellow counselors, uh, rather than putting another item on the agenda Monday evening, uh, is there anyone Tuesday. who would oppose directing our staff to look further Tuesday. into this? Tuesday. Tuesday. Or Tuesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, take your team, Justin, and follow this up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, under subcommittee reports, infrastructure, <laughs> Vice President Culp. Um, uh, the, at the, this time, this was at the 17th of, of October, the uh, playground was half done, installed, rubberizing and paving done. Uh, dog part has been repaired and restored. Field one was finishing, field two, uh, was the worst one. We repaired and in-house saved a lot of money. Seating going on now, well, that was in October. A lot of community interest in, uh, in uh, Maple Street courts uh, working out well so far. Um, licensing inspections, notices going out for trash issues on 3rd Street, everything flowing rather smooth. Uh, good things going on, property transports going up. Um, and... Uh, uh, um, Doug's department, <laughs> public works, paving moving along, cleanup done by next meeting. Um, Airy Street, new box for sediment uh, is going into Manitoni, so they have to take care of that. Uh, Stone Roads and Alleys, grant received, water sewer project at Wilson, <coughs> washing a lot of rock. Closed loop, almost done, uh, waiting for a couple of poles, and that's about it. Great. Great. Uh, Ms. Clerk, tell us about economic development. Mm -hmm. Good evening, counselors, Madam Mayor. Um, 
once again, great things happening. Sorry I wasn't here last <coughs> month. I was on vacation, but uh, things just continued on. I think uh, one of the most important things that we should all be celebrating is happy sixth anniversary to Lily's Grill. Um, Adam, and, Adam and his wife six have uh, six years. Wow. wow. Mm. So, yes, and they have certainly been committed to um, the community, and we should all um, be very grateful and thankful to their success. Dillian Dean had a ribbon cutting uh, this past week, so that was another great milestone for the downtown. And the, I met with the new owners of what was the KISS Motorcycle Building, 22 <coughs> East High, just yesterday, and they are very energized in continuing to grow their business and having a presence here in Pottstown. So more to come on that. The Mercury Building has sold. It went to settlement a few weeks ago. There is a concept for it. The new owners are moving straight ahead with it. And it, the concept is to turn it into a boutique hotel with a lounge on the first floor of Bourbon and Whiskey. So wow. uh, we're Good. really looking forward to that. And um, Evan, I hope you'll enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> So I also want to talk about all of the things that the businesses have come together and collaborated on holiday celebrations, which is a lot of fun things to do. So Shop Small on November 30th. We hope you will come and support the businesses and the many organizations. And I want to remind everybody, in addition to uh, what you think about of going to Once Upon a Time and maybe buying a new dress or a tie for dad, or mom, um, I would like you to think about gift certificates because we have lots of businesses and you don't need to know somebody's size for that or giving to the many great organizations that help this town go. On December the 6th, uh, the, uh, also the, at the clock tower there will be a tree put up on Shop Small Saturday. On December 6th at the alley there will be a tree that will be lit that evening, Friday that evening. On December 7th, we will have Santa arrive by dragon boat on the river <laughs> at Riverfront <laughs> Park, and then he will go make a stop in the Innovation Center. Uh, from there, he will be given a ride by a fire truck up to the alley where the Santa Shack will be located. And um, we will also be having a seek and find based on A Christmas Story, which is the show that opens on Friday night at Steel River. So you will be able to go to area businesses and get your card filled out by seeking and finding things like the rifle and the leg lamp and the Dakota ring and all of those fun things. And then at the alley, you'll go to collect your prize, which will be a fun experience. Beverly's is having cookie decorating from 10 to noon on that day. And also, I was informed this morning that um, the center, which is where the Y is located, they're doing um, activities with Santa as well. Santa's going to be very busy that day. Hmm. Smith Family Plaza, there is a tree being donated, and volunteers will be helping to decorate that tree. That will be lit on the night of the 7th at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., with um, the planters being announced by the mayor, the winners of the planter contest. Businesses along High Street have adopted a planter this year, and they will be using their creative talents to decorate the planters. And there is a whole team um, that it will be judging those, and then those, those will be um, announced that evening. Those prizes will be announced those e that evening. Um, I think there will be three categories in addition to just bragging rights. And then we hope that you will walk over to the theater because you will already have your tickets for A Christmas Story. That Sunday at First Presbyterian Church at December 8th, there is a group of professional musicians, vocalists that will be performing at First Presbyterian Church, and we also have the house tour, <coughs> which benefits go for. 
So there's a lot of activity. What does that have to do with economic development? Because there are things for people to come and do and be excited about, and they just add to more and more people wanting to be here. I made a pitch the other day during a podcast at Tri-County Area Chamber. We also have a lot of office inventory. We are starting to work on that. We've sent out a survey to area brokers. We want people to bring their businesses here. We have great assets for their employees, which is a great thing for their employees to have, um, just to be able to walk downtown. And I will tell you, I will wrap up where I started. The people who bought the KISS building, that is one of the things that has really attracted them to this area is all that is going on in town. And it just brings a quality of life to their work life as well. That's Good. my report. Great. Thank you. Thank you. One more. At the end of November, JJ Radigan's will be open. Ah. December seventh. So, Councillor Lindsay, they planned all this for your birthday That's on December seventh. Right. December seventh, nineteen forty-one. Oh. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Let them marry me. There you go, Pearl Harbor. Yes, mm. that's it. Okay, uh, where are we? C is uh, transportation. Vice President Cole. Uh, no meeting. No meeting. Ordinance review committee. Councillor Proskell. Well, I was in the the meeting for about five minutes. My wife called and told me uh, that my one-year-old had dumped a bunch of Comet distancer oh. in his face. Oh. So, no. so I had to leave. He's fine. Oh. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't really the meeting. Baby smells clean up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Always getting it. Uh, Fish and Methods Committee, Councilor Lebedinsky. Uh, this meeting had software updates concerning the rental system. <clears throat> the rental invoice the voicing uh, was updated and merged to the database from Cassell to uh, CMIS, which I'm not totally familiar with yet, but I'm getting there. Um, they reviewed it with the LNI staff. Um, they also have a uh, provided a function to review the accounts before invoicing, um, a simple interface for the invoicing. Uh, other parts of that program is uh, they installed the finance section to, to, re to record the payments correctly. Uh, other system updates were uh, just general invoicing and a business section for fire safety, uh, business session and fire safety inspections. Uh, so we're getting all this uh, coordinated online paperless so that when we need it, the information's available a, a lot more readily and um, we're moving forward, which is good. And they will be able to function more efficiently now. Very good. Little by little. Uh, under boards, emergency services. Chief. Hello, everyone. Um, we had a busy month this month in the fire department. We had uh, 99 calls, which was uh, gives us 906 for the year. But three of them were significant. And um, one was almost $44,000 in damage up on uh, Lincoln Street. Ooh. So that was an accidental house fire in the afternoon. Um, the big thing was we had over 50 fire safety events with volunteers and the career guys going out there. The preliminary numbers are we touched about 800 families and kids at the schools and different functions in the, uh, in the program. <coughs> um, other than that, uh, you gave Doug an award, which a lot of people don't know, I guess he left, but Doug's a lifetime member of the fire department. He's oh. three years of the North mm -hmm. Bank. Oh, wow. he was assistant chief, so we kind of missed that in his little recognition. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thank yeah. You. How about that? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Human relations. Ms. Levengood. Alrighty. Good evening, councilors, um, council president, Madam Mayor. Um, November is Native American Heritage Month. Uh, this commemorative month aims to provide a platform for Native people <coughs> in the United States of America to share their culture, their traditions, music, craft, dance, 
and Ways and Concepts of Life. Um, Veterans Day is November the 11th, um, honoring those who have served in the United States Armed Forces, and November the 28th is Thanksgiving, a day of giving thanks. Um, the panel exhibit um, entitled The Long Road to LGBTQ Plus, uh, Equality in PA that I informed you about last month. That has been delayed and being displayed uh, in the Montgomery County Community College North Hall Gallery um, on the West Campus at 18 H High Street. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but it's just delayed. Um, on Monday, um, I represented the commission at the Leadership, Law Enforcement, and Love Attacking Anti-Semitism and Racism um, in the Commonwealth. There was a program at Salem Baptist Church in Abington. Um, Reverend Mitchell moderated the question and answer and discussion with Attorney General Josh Shapiro and Chad Dion Lassiter, who is the Executive Director of the Human Relations Commission. Um, needs to say it was a packed house. Um, there were informative uh, discussions around the rise of the anti-Semitism and racism um, in the Commonwealth. Um, and um, as the leaders of different community organizations that were there, um, some suggestions as to what we can do um, included some training, some teaching of our history, having honest, open dialogues, and uh, the need to listen and understand one another. Um, it was a very successful event. Um, it was very impactful. It was, it was a really neat event. Um, now, the Commission's November meeting, that's going to be held next Wednesday, November 13th at 6 p.m. in the uh, Council Chambers, and the Montgomery County LGBT Business Council is scheduled to make a presentation, and all of welcome to it. Great. Sorry, Marcia, did you get my um, email with the proposed ordinance for the LGBTQ community? Oh. Um, yes, I do. Okay. Right. That's why the council is coming. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Fan Bank. Ms. Penrod. I thought all these people here earlier were here for the land bank report. Um, I am. <laughs> our first grant re application request will be filed next Friday. Major milestone. Uh, we are meeting with Montgomery County officials uh, to share what we're up to. They're a lot more interested in the land bank now that there's one here, uh, and we're going to see what we can do to um, coordinate information exchange. Uh, the website is now up and running on the new borough website. Thank you, staff. Uh, the Blight to Bright Breakfast, sponsored by the Housing Alliance of Pennsylvania, which I think I mentioned before, will be on December 5th and you will uh, be invited. And it was, the land bank was mentioned favorably in the uh, recent ULI presentation, which I thought was a cool thing. Very good. And while you're there, tell us about the library. On uh, November 13th, the family reading program is on the subject of transportation, at which the library will be distributing free booster seats for kids courtesy of the Department of Health and Human Services. We've done this before, but I just, it's the first I've actually learned about it, so I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, we have, out of necessity, because of the requests we keep getting, we've created, the staff has created a handout listing all the places to eat in Pottstown. It's a full page, it's fine print, and they have to keep updating it all the time, which is very annoying that we have all these new places coming. And the other side is also uh, a page of things to do in Pottstown. And our printer wasn't working today, so I'll bring copies and you can distribute them. And then Friday at 2 o'clock, Bill Haley, Jr., local author and businessman, will do an author's talk about his new book, Crazy Man Crazy, about his father, Bill Haley, and the Comets. It's a free program. Uh, he will have books for sale and signing. It's quite the story. And if you have any um, baby boomers or music fans or book fans in, on your Christmas list, please come and uh, buy a book. Very good. Thank you. 
Now, next, uh, Councillor Kirkland is not here, but uh, Councillor Trinita, can you give us any update on the Ricketts Center? Okay, um, I, they had a um, trunk a treat mm -hmm. um, last week. And um, thank you again for the candy. Dan, Dan bought candy to my house for the kids. And um, Joe and I, I, I would have been there. I just couldn't get I back know. to town in time. <laughs> yeah, well, we appreciate it. All the candy was gone. Then the kids was really appreciative of that. It was, um, it was um, not as many people as we expected to come, but there was it was enough. It was enough, and the kids had candy and everything. Um, David, Charles was there. Hannah Davis, um, Rachel, and um, her husband William. And if I forgot anybody, please blame my mind, not my heart. Um, yes, so it was it was really nice. The kids got to have, um, we did the trunk of tree. We got to see all the costumes and stuff. And then um, they all went inside, and they had hot dogs and chips and stuff. So by the time they got home, they were really high off candy. Great. Thanks to us. Thank you. And while your mic is still on, uh, tell us about the school district. Okay, so this, I went to the school board meeting, and um, they are having um, town hall meetings currently for the Edgewood School. They're thinking about bringing the kindergarten center and moving the fifth graders back to the elementary school. I unfortunately wasn't able to attend because of time and work, and they are having a meeting this Friday at the admin building, um, Friday the 8th between 9 and 10 a.m. So let's see if I okay. can try to make that one. Yep. Okay, Madam Mayor, may we have your report? So we had a pretty busy and successful October in Boston, I would have to say. Um, we had Oktoberfest and National Night Out, the Pal Food Truck Festival, I met with the Pottstown Care students. I was supposed to be the mayor of Whoville for their doctors or for their Seuss float, um, but unfortunately, with the um, the rain and the parade was moved, their float will be next year. We had a brief tour of Montgomery County Community College and met the uh, new vice president, who has gone to every single meeting. I've seen her everywhere in Pottstown, so she's really getting involved. I think that's going to be. Um, a good addition to the college. Um, PCN Network came out and filmed lots of individuals and the borough um, for a Explore PA uh, commercial that they're going to be doing to promote Pottstown. And Justin, I think that is going to be out in December. Mm -hmm. or yeah, it's a 30 minute television show and it should come out sometime uh, late spring. Uh, early s uh, summer hmm. on PCN, Pennsylvania Cable Network Television, uh, under the, the Explore PA Burroughs TV series, show series. Um, PCA, Pottstown Community Action, we spent, I think it was two Saturdays in a row, mm -hmm. um, we scraped off the glue and chiseled the glue off the pavers in Chestnut Street Park, and then the following week, we installed pavers. There are still some missing because they need to be specially cut. Um, so those will be replaced in, I think, the next couple weeks. I'd like to thank Genesis Housing for the grant, Habitat, and the Philly Fires Company who came out and rinsed off uh, all the debris so we would have a clean slate. And you helped. I no, did. I got to um, use a fire hose. It was, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> um, we had haunts on high, trunk or treat, so many Halloween um, and trick or treating activities for the kids. Children's Discovery Center fundraiser and presentation, Carousel of Flavor, Trinita and I um, spent a glorious uh, day together eating the most delicious food in Pottstown. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We had our, oh, ULI came out and um, Urban Land Institute and did an interview of um, individuals in the borough. I participated in that. We had our Halloween parade and costume contest. Then I also judged the costume contest at Manitani Stillworks. And I think I deserve a huge round of applause for 
holding off the weather for Halloween, so <laughs> trick or treating could actually happen there you go, from player. six to eight. <laughs> um, I also participated uh, last weekend in a scavenger hunt fundraiser to benefit the teenage son of, uh, in memory of his mother, who is uh, one of our lost team members of our Relay for Life team. And I have to say, this was the most amazing fundraiser I have ever participated in. And um, it involved Pottsgrove, Pottstown, businesses. I went to places I've never even heard of in Pottstown. There's a bar called Carpies. Um, they close at five. I, but um, he was very happy. I think that was uh, a lot of people. What? Nothing. OK. Um, it was really neat. You got to go out and take pictures and promote Pottstown. So I really think that uh, we should model that and do some uh, scavenger hunt fundraisers. We, uh, we had our PCA meeting, pension board meeting. Uh, last night I volunteered at the auditions for the Rotary Performing Arts Scholarship Competition at the Hill School, and then we had our community leaders breakfast uh, this morning at Tri-County. I had my first breakfast at Honey's Homebrewed Cafe, which I have to say was fairly delicious. I had avocado toast and green goddess. I highly recommend it. We also had the grand opening for Laws Desserts, or is it LA's Desserts? Laws, okay. Mm -hmm. They have gluten-free, um, treats and they're really amazing you wouldn't know they were gluten-free so that was october uh, november 8th from four to uber kiki is having a contest a bartending contest between potts grove and potts town uh, bartending challenge and the um, proceeds are going to benefit the cluster so please come out and cheer on our potts town bartender then the next day, so after you get home from Uber, set your alarm, 9.30, please be at Edgewood Cemetery um, to help clean up and place flag, flags for the veterans. Um, and then at 5 p.m., there's a Miami-style cafe food truck at the distillery. The 10th um, from 8 to 4 at Sly Fox is the Cyclocross. You can either participate or watch. I will not be participating, but I may watch. Um, the 14th at Lily's from 4 to 9 is a fundraiser for Go Forth. Proceeds will go to um, benefit our Go Forth Festival for 2020. The 16th from 6 to 9 is the Rotary Performing Arts Competition at the Hill School um, Arts Center. It is a um, scholarship competition. I have to say, from the auditions last night, they're having auditions um, tonight and um, tomorrow. Just from the auditions that I saw last night, these kids are amazing. There was two harps, a pianist, multiple singers. I mean, it was just phenomenal talent um, from all over. Um, and oh, the 20th. Uh, from 5.30 to 8.30 is the Rotary B2B Mixer at Red Horse. And the 24th from 12 to 4 at the Carousel is the Annual Client Appreciation Pie Giveaway. Um, bring donations for Operation Backpack, and there will be activities for kids and pie. And who doesn't love pie? So, um, And then basically, as Peggy said, <coughs> just block out December. Like every weekend, day in December, um, just block it out. You're going to be in town. There's something to do from like morning to night. So um, more on that. Later. Okay, great. Ah, Mr. Manager. <laughs> 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 All right. Wow. You, you guys, Were you busy? You guys, are getting, you, you guys are getting good. You're starting to cover stuff on my list now. So that's mm. just great. Um, just a couple updates to, to stay attention to. <coughs> you should have, some of you should have received uh, flyers already and your utility bills explaining uh, our new trash contract and some of the changes that will come along with that. So we do not yet have a date yet for when the new gray trash totes will be distributed, but um, once we do, we will put that on our website. So stay tuned there um, to, to, to find out when that will be. 
Also, we're uh, also getting very close to getting parking kiosks installed in the downtown. And in the next couple of weeks, we have a uh, brochure, thanks to Deb Penrod, which helped assisted in preparing that, uh, which basically s spells out the how, who, what, where, when, why of parking with Park Mobile in Pottstown. So look for that. We'll be distributing that to the businesses within that um, that parking district where, where paid parking is in effect. And then also we're in the process of reconvening with the parking committee to look at our parking permits. And um, right now to encourage more um, use of our, of our public lots, we are planning on offering a, uh, a parking permit to uh, any, any business resident or visitor that wants to buy them. That would allow them to park in a space in any one of our, our lots, one through six. So that, that we did that in an effort to try to um, respond to some of the concerns we got from businesses regarding their, their employees and being able to park. So this is a pretty discounted um, rate to park for the, for the whole year. Hmm. So look for more information to that on that to come soon. Just an update on our 2019 paving project. That is pretty much complete. Everything's been paved at this point. There's still some ceiling that needs to be done along the curbs, but we've accomplished 2.7 miles of, of paving this summer. And uh, we still have our water sewer replacement project underway, uh, mainly in Washington and Wilson Street areas right now. Uh, once that's complete, there'll be another 1.3 miles of roadways paved uh, curb to curb uh, as a part of those utility replacements. And as um, Councilor Culp had mentioned, our closed loop traffic signal project is very close to being wrapped up. Um, PennDOT, I heard from them today, they hope to go live with the smart communication between the signals in the next couple weeks. Hmm. Also, uh, I was in Harrisburg uh, last week, got uh, called down there by Representative Cerisi, um, and I met with one of the deputies from D DCED, as well as an assistant to the appropriations chair, um, so that they could explain to me two new funding opportunities that have opened up through uh, PA, Small Water and Sewer, and the H2O program, which will actually allow us to uh, seek funding for the ARCH systems here in Pottstown. So you'll see later on tonight, uh, we'll be asking for a resolution on Tuesday um, for to address both of those issues. That's it. Very good. Next, uh, Pottstown Collision Center at 601 619 West High Street. Where do we stand? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, if Council recalls, I guess at our August meeting, you uh, had proved the conditional use for this project up at 601 619 High Street. I believe you uh, saw a sketch plan and you have now a preliminary land development plan in your packet uh, for the proposed collision center uh, at the property. Uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this project at its October meeting. I believe you have the uh, Borough Engineers Review Letter, the County Letter as well. Um, the applicant uh, agreed to comply with the comments outlined in the Engineer Letter. The Planning Commission recommended uh, Council approve the plan subject to compliance with those comments. Uh, there was a waiver request letter that the Planning Commission also supported. One of the items was uh, a contribution of $500 per tree to the extent they couldn't meet the tree ordinance. Mm -hmm. I think the applicant's engineer might be here this evening if there's any questions. Uh, but I think you're all familiar with the plan because I think we saw it in conjunction with the conditional use hearing. Um, obviously, uh, you know the uh, conditional use approval is under appeal. It's still pending in county court. Uh, you are permitted to approve the plan subject to a uh, satisfactory resolution of that appeal in the applicant's favor. So I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm sure the applicant's engineer would ha answer any questions as well. And uh, it's ready to be listed for Tuesday night uh, if you're ready to do so. Mr. Wien, you were at the Planning Commission meeting yep. if I missed yep. anything. Uh, it was unanimously approved uh, at the Planning Commission asking for council's approval. Any questions to this? Hearing none, we'll list it for Tuesday evening. 13, Certified Local Government Renewal. Yeah, so if, uh, if 
probably most of you won't recall, but some time ago the borough enrolled in a certified local government program, uh, which offers uh, tools, funding, and technical support for rehabilitation of historic properties. The, we've been informed that the borough's designation is set to expire unless renewed at the end of the year, before the end of the year. Um, and some of the advantages of being in this program are um, extra points that we would get on grant applications to uh, DCED's community uh, assistance program, which we do, um, you know, go for quite frequently with uh, in concert with paid, as well as other grants that are offered through DCED and others. Um, the CLG program also added a new feature. They now provide an in-house architect that can be used by CLG members to prepare um, development uh, alternatives for historic buildings. So if you have a developer that comes in, they have an old building, don't really know what to do with it, how to treat it, we could reach out to this person and use them to come up with a schematic for uh, how it could work for that applicant and still fit in with this historic context. Uh, is of, of is that town. service free to us? There's, yeah, there's no cost to be a part of this program. Okay. Um, what they're asking for is a, is, is a, is a resolution um, stating that we would like to continue in the program and um, also a intergovernmental intergovernmental agreement between the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission. Great. Any questions, counselors? If not, we'll list that for Tuesday. <coughs> 14, Lawn and Rights Away Maintenance. Now, if, this is an extension of an existing contract? Correct. Yeah, if you recall, this was a contract that was, was approved uh, last year for the 2019 lawn mowing. Uh, we would ask that uh, this contract get extended. Um, we awarded it to Green Advantage uh, Landscaping, and uh, we would lock in the cost uh, for that for, for the second year, the same costs. Okay. No questions, we'll list that for action. 15, Sports Enterprises Lease Renewal. This is a um, lease that we, uh, the borough has for Sundstrom Fields that we lease out to a local um, youth baseball club. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would like to ask council to extend um, uh, this, this lease um, under, in, in accordance with the, the, the existing lease that we have in place. Okay, no changes? Uh, no, no changes to the lease. All right. Mm -hmm. No questions. We'll list that for action. Uh, 16, resolution, H2O and small water and sewers grants. So these, these were the two programs that I, was, that I was telling you about that are now available. These were previously <coughs> only available for um, potable water and sanitary sewer work. Uh, the state did recently change that, uh, I think last year, to now allow stormwater projects to, to qualify. Hmm. So the small water and sewer are for pro projects from $30,000 to $500,000 with a 15% match. The H2O program is for projects of uh, $500,000 minimum up to $20 million maximum. That has a 50% match. And if you recall, we did receive a $280,000 um, grant from the CFA Floodway Mitigation Program. That $280,000 that we received would be eligible to be used as a match for either of these grants. Um, so there is a chance that we could string together a group of funding sources and, and start addressing some of these issues with, with very little out-of-pocket money um, from, from the borough. So we're still determining the amounts that we want to go for. We're going to apply for both uh, grants, and um, we're probably targeting a 500,000 one for the small water and sewer, and somewhere between 500,000 and a million for the H2O grant. We'll, we'll provide more clarity on the exact numbers, along with the match commitments that we would be obligated to uh, on Tuesday night for your consideration. Okay. No problem. We'll list that for Tuesday. 17 is an ordinance for 401A defined contribution plan. Now, this is for the non-uniform pension. Yeah, correct. This, this ordinance essentially um, codifies the uh, 401A defined um, contribution plan that we've established through our uh, AFSCME employees. So um, this would essentially allow us to 
um, provide this, this plan by ordinance to any uh, employees hired after January 1st, 2020. Anything you want to add? No, the action would be just to authorize the advertisement of the ordinance so you could adopt it uh, in December. Very good. No questions. We're listed for Tuesday evening. 18, Sly Fox Track Club, 5K on January 1st. Sly Fox would like to close Glasgow from Circle of Progress to Rice Street to West Chestnut, um, Prince, and right on to Glasgow and back. Uh, the, the closure would be from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on January 1st, 2020. So that would give all the polar bear swimmers time to change clothes to go running. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they can go as they are, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll list that for Tuesday. Uh, 19 Sly Fox Track Club, the Super Bowl 5K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are the same, it looks like the same streets again uh, that would be closed on February 2nd, 2020 from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Great. No questions. We'll list that. Uh, so much for action for Tuesday night. Now it's time for comments from our citizens <coughs> present. And those of you addressing council, please note there is a three-minute three, three minute time limit. Okay. Nelson Swartley, please. Welcome. About uh, three years ago, I decided to invest in Pottstown, and I purchased a single home out in the area of the YMCA on Wilson Street. Wilson and... Uh, North Adams out in that area. And so I put money into it and looked for a tenant and found one. And so shortly after the tenant moved in, I got flooding in the basement and more flooding and more flooding and more water. And, more, and like the 30 cleanups had to be done to get the water out of the house. So eventually I had to spend a lot of money and hire a, some kind of a Specialist, which I had difficulty in finding the person to do it right, and he agreed with my proposal of how to, how to best deal with it. And so I'm now pumping what I deem as Potsdam water out of my house because the water is rushing down North Adams Street and it comes down to the corner of uh, Wilson and makes a, a bend there. And it, it isn't all going down in the storm drains. It's going around the bend, and it's going down Wilson, and it's flooding Wilson Street, and this water goes underground, and it's flooding out the people's basements in that area. So I came in and uh, talked to Doug Yerger, and he was very helpful. I had three meetings with him. He even stayed late in the evening and uh, uh, talked to me about the history of uh, what's going on with a lot of water problems in Potsdam. So there's others. But the thing is that uh, it seems that, uh, well, I went to uh, a meeting with the Water and Sewer Authority. And uh, four of us people that are having our basements flooded in that area, some have finished basements and have to tear that stuff out and redo it and put in new drainage systems. Uh, we went to the meeting and we had letters written and they were supposed to be passed to one then to council. Now that was uh, our meeting with Water and Sewer Authority was uh, last year, December 18. And they told us the letters would be passed on to Borough Council and then something we hear from them. You have 30 I have not, seconds left. I have not heard anything to this date. And that's about a year ago. And I think that uh, I'm being ignored. We're being ignored. The, our problem's being ignored. Right now, they're out there digging up the street and putting in new sewer lines. Well, I think other lines, other water lines, could have been put in at the same time to drain extra water away from that area. OK. So Your time has expired, but uh, from this OK. Problem. And why, why hasn't anything been done? Right. 
you can look into that. Yeah, we'll look into that further. Um, <clears throat> I'll talk to our public works director and see what, what his analysis of the situation is as well. There, I have a picture of the flooding out there. There was a, a car came through the water. It's, it's up over the curves. Right. Uh, the car went into the water, raised up out of the water, hit the parked car, and an ambulance had to be called. So there's that too. Okay. It's dangerous. And another person has to put up sandbags to keep right. the water from coming into his house. All right. Our, manage will, our manager will direct staff to look into this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No further citizen comments. Okay, none, no more from citizens. Um, okay, how about councillors? Councillor Paez, any discussion? Well, I'm very happy to see so many positive things coming to Pasta. Mm. Good. I'm glad. Councillor Lindsay, <laughs> anything? <laughs> yes, so um, a little bit of piggyback off the mayor's report um, uh, went to the Hall Halloween parade and I was very happy that she didn't change the date because we had fabulous weather for the kids so it was great um, the Pottstown Children's Discovery Museum they had a, um, a little event there at this um, Smith Family Plaza that was nice um, of course Hans uh, High Street the taste of carousel yeah so we went there and um, my grandbaby came, and she was. <laughs> I had I had to watch my grandbaby that day, so it was perfect. And she did. I said, "Well, wait till I finish judging, and then I'll take you on the carousel." She's like, "No, I'm going on the carousel." So um, Stephanie was nice enough to take her on the carousel. So yeah, yeah, that thank you, Stephanie, for doing that for me. <laughs> so she enjoyed that. Um, let's see. Oh, and the interview with Urban Land Institute that was. That was nice. I, I, that was my first time doing that. And um, I like how they gave us some input of what happened when the last time that they came and how we're doing now and what should we do to move forward. So that was really um, informative to go to. So I was um, appreciated that they asked me to attend. Um, I went to Franklin Elementary School. They trick or treat, and Don and I and his stepdaughter we went to um, La Desserts Ribbon Cutting Center. Was that how? Yes, we went to their ribbon cutting center. Best ribbon cutting ceremony I've been to. <laughs> it was nice. Let me tell you, they blessed not only their business but they blessed all the businesses in there. So it was not only a ribbon cutting ceremony but it was spiritual. So also, um, in November, Lily's Grill, <coughs> excuse me, is having a fundraiser for Go Forth. That's um, November 14th um, at 4 o'clock p.m. Professional Pharmacy, because that's my pharmacy, I like them. They are hosting a small business event November the 30th. And I'm not sure if you guys know about this. Oh, but yeah, this one. Moving forward with Amy Wolf, she has a podcast and she interviews every, um, like all the new businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. So every business that she talked to, she said the process for um, coming in is fabulous, and they all, and all of them credit Peggy Lee and Justin. So I want to a special shout out and thank you to you guys because they always throw your names out there and say that um, that the process had been getting better they said I don't have any problems so that's a good that's that's good that we get that we move forward so I just wanted to say that to you guys that's it that's all I have okay council Lebedinsky uh, still the sixth or is it Thanksgiving no. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing happy Thanksgiving everyone okay, okay. Vice President Cope. I have nothing and uh, happy Thanksgiving and it's wonderful to watch them. Oh, oh you, you'll, you'll see them again. We're coming back here Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Proskell. Well, I'd like to thank, uh, uh, I guess, Philly's uh, Fire Chief Chad Quinter for making uh, the parade kind of special for my three year old. He's you know, yeah. little mm -hmm. boy's like obsessed with you know, firefighters, so we let him uh, you know, tag along on the parade in a fire truck. Mm -hmm. and. It, with two of our volunteer uh, um, firefighters, too, Evan Gable and uh, Elias Scipio, were you know, really good guys and really kind of reassures my faith in our <laughs> volunteer fire company. So that was a lot of fun. Okay. Mayor, anything more? 
Okay. Oh, I had. I'm oh, sorry. I just okay. want to brag because yes. I never had a hot dog before. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah